despite the fact he has a Super Bowl ring, you can bet Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs are making note of the bling handed to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last night, especially the fact the score of that last Super Bowl game is etched into it. The hurt from that loss may have lessened, but you can bet Mahomes and company still feeling that, uh, that little sting. Mahomes looking for a bounce back season for his Chiefs, and it's bounce back in quotation marks because they were the best team in football at 14 and two, and Mahomes second in yards passing behind Deshaun Watson. He is the odds on favorite to lead the league in passing yards in 2021, according to our friends over at William Hill. At plus 400, Dak Prescott next at plus 600 with Josh Allen looking to lead the Bills once again, plus 800, and Tom Brady all healthy at plus 1,000. For more on the passing yards and other quarterback bets you may want to look at this season, we now welcome in the host of the Pick 6 podcast and the most super of the super friends, Will Brinson. <laughs> and a guy who knows all about those early season betting lines are Emery Hunt, who has dressed up for this edition of HQ, the tie, the pocket square. Emery, you're putting me to shame over there. Uh, you know, just trying to be casual on a Friday, you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right, let's talk about some quarterback picks here, some future bets. Uh, pick to lead the NFL in passing yards this season. You saw the list there. Mahomes is the favorite. But are, are you buying into that, or are you finding value elsewhere here, Emery? We start with you. I'm finding value elsewhere. I'm taking into account, folks need to understand, this 17-game season, so the numbers will be a little bit skewed. Either way, but I'm going with Jameis Winston to lead the league in touchdown passing yards. We've, I mean, sorry, in passing yards. We've seen him do it before, and now he's in a better offense, a more quarterback friendly offense, a turnkey offensive situation, and had a year to digest the scheme, the system, get used to the players that he's going to be throwing to behind a very good offensive line. I can easily see him leading the league in passing yards once again. Wow, spicy. I love that. That's good. That's what that 75 to 1. I mean, you might as well sprinkle some 60 to 1 on Jameis to win MVP if you're going to go that route. I'm going to go a little bit lower on the odds, but still going to be in the, you know, the double digits here with Joe Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals at 20 to 1. The one problem with the Saints, and I, I like Emory's thinking there, especially at that price, is that they have a good defense. You know what the Bengals don't have? Any defense whatsoever. So you need to look for a team that has a quarterback who can throw a ton, a team with a, a defense that is going to struggle to stop anyone. And so for me, the best options are probably the Cowboys, the Falcons, and the Bengals. And I look at Burrow and the way that Zach Taylor's got to get good stats from him this year. He needs to have a successful season with his second-year quarterback. He needs him not to get hurt. They improved the offensive line. They added Jamar Chase. You look at the sports line projections here, and we have three guys projecting Expected way north of 100 targets, expected 600 plus passing attempts for Joe Burrow. Should play all 17 games. If he does, I think he'll be right in the mix here for most passing yards. Okay, now hang on, Emory. I got to come back to you here with uh, with Jameis Winston. I mean, it was eyebrow raising when I when I saw the pick, but now with the news with Michael Thomas potentially being out at least half the season potentially. I mean, are you are you still going to ride with Jameis here, or is there value elsewhere that you might take a look at? No, I'm still going to ride with Jameis. Alvin Kamara can make up some of those receptions. They have a rookie in Kawan Baker out of South Alabama. That's fantastic. He's going to be their Robert Meacham or their Devery Henderson within that offense. You also look at Adam Troutman, who they will finally unleash to the public this year at tight end. They're going to find receptions. They're going to find a deep passing game this year with a stronger arm quarterback. So I'm still all in on Winston. Yeah, uh, speaking of the NFC South, by the way, I think there's a pretty good bet that is worth looking at right now. And I think it's going to move fairly rapidly. It hasn't changed much on the Michael Thomas news. But the, the Buccaneers to win the NFC South at William Hill is minus 200. And you can find it elsewhere. You know, you should always bet at William Hill. But in the event that you're shopping or have to use other options, you can find it somewhere between minus 150 and minus 200. I really think it should be minus 350 or minus 400. I mean, you're talking about, look at everybody else in the division is going through some major transition. You lose Julio Jones at the Falcons. Michael Thomas going to miss some of the season with the Saints. We don't know who their quarterback's actually going to be yet. And the Buccaneers are bringing back all their starters that's a lot of juice to lay for a season-long future but I think it's mispriced at minus 200 right now and Tom Brady is 100% healthy we know what he did last year we're going to talk about that in a second but first let's talk about touchdown numbers then total touchdown numbers and we start with Pat Mahomes the over under listed at 38 and a half now he threw 38 last year he averages 38 for his career so far will he go over or under that total for you will 
I'm going to go under here, and, and look, I don't like getting in the way of a Patrick Mahomes freight train by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and one of the key problems here for Mahomes when you're taking the under is that, remember, he gets credit for those little one-yard shovel passes at the goal line to Tyreek Hill. But I think if you look at Andy Reid's history with high-drafted running backs, uh, you know, most specifically Brian Westbrook and LaShawn McCoy when he was with the Eagles, they didn't really take off as feature backs until their second season. I think Clyde Edwards-Alaire is undervalued in fantasy this year. I think he's going to be a key focal point of their offense. And even though you're going to get 17 games from, Mah- from the Chiefs, I don't think you're getting 17 games from Mahomes because we've seen pa- uh, Andy Reid more than willing to rest Patrick Mahomes at the end of the season. He's only played 16 games once in his career or 16 starts once in his career because of that or because of injury. So I'll take the under here, but I don't feel very comfortable with it. Yeah, to me, this is like money in the bank, like a Giannis free throw in game six. I'm going over. He's going to (laughs) play 16 games because you're right, Will. He's going to sit out that 17th game probably, but he's going to have those three or four games a year where he's going to put up ridiculous touchdown passing stats, like six touchdowns against one opponent, two here, seven here. It's going to be ridiculous, but it's going to average out to him going over that number. So I'm definitely hitting over. All right, let's talk about Lamar Jackson, Baltimore's quarterback. Saw his numbers dip last year. Completion percentage was down. Yards were down. Touchdowns were down. Interceptions were up. That's not usually a good indicator. His yards prop is higher than any season total that he has thrown to date. So the expectations are that he's going to air it out. Sammy Watkins is now there. The number, I think, is 3,350. Are you going over or are you going under, Emery? I'm going under here and not for the reason that the public may think. A lot of people focus on the numbers that Lamar Jackson has and say, oh, he has to get better as as a passer. He has to throw the football more. No, they're beating the brakes off opponents, so he doesn't have to throw a lot. That's efficient offense. So with him averaging 1,000 yards a season, I think because of his rushing numbers, he won't have to throw for that many passing yards. So I think that number, even in the 17-game season, but just like with Mahomes, we see Lamar tend to sit out that last game. I'm going under that number. Yeah, going under here too. But I, I'd like to state some of the same, you know, sort of the same uh, approach here as Emory. People, you know, you pointed out, Jeremy, that you know Lamar Jackson did regress in 2020. People get all up in arms when you use the word regression. His numbers in 2019, when he won the MVP, were completely unsustainable. It just wasn't going to happen over the course of another full season. It's just like Patrick Mahomes from 2018 to 2019, except nobody made a big deal out of that because people aren't mad at Patrick Mahomes. They're mad at Lamar Jackson because he proved him wrong because he's not a freaking wide receiver. So, Lamar Jackson, awesome, but I will still take the under there just because it's a, a too high a number. Probably miss that final week of the season if the Ravens are, you know, pile up a bunch of wins. Well, one of the biggest questions about the Cowboys going into 2021 is how is Dak's ankle? Now, we all remember the gruesome injury. Now he's back. He was on pace to shatter Peyton Manning's passing yards record for a season when he went down last year in the fifth game. His yards prop is at 4, 47.50 and a half for 2021. He's only surpassed 4,700 yards once in his career. But Will, are you in on the Dak attack is back? Uh, yeah, I'd like to be all in on this. I, I don't understand why the number in 4,900. It's just 200 yards too short. When you look at Dak and what his number, I, I don't know that you can look at last year's you know short sample and say, oh, that's what he's going to prorate out to because the Cowboys are actually bad on offense. They would get down double digits, and then they just have to throw the ball on every single down. I think you'll see an emphasis on trying to get Zeke Elliott involved more because Jerry Jones is you know the general manager and de facto offensive coordinator uh, as well. But the Cowboys' defense is going to be terrible. They, they, they drafted a ton of players, but this defense is too young. I don't know that they're going to like acclimate to Dan Quinn's system right away, and I think they'll give up plenty of points. I would expect for Dak Prescott to be throwing the ball a bunch because the Cowboys are going to be involved in shootouts, and I think we see him easily cross over 4,700, get up upwards probably above 5,000 with a 17-game schedule, and I expect him to play all 17. Yeah, I totally agree with Will here, and if I had to choose someone 1B to Jameis Winston, 1A, it would be Dak Prescott because of those reasons. Defensively, yeah, they have a lot of talent on paper with new defensive coordinator and all that new talent. I just don't know how it's going to play out. You hope it plays out for the better, but I just see them being able to air it out. They have three legit number one options at wide receiver. Health at tight end with Blake Jarwin coming back, and we know Zeke can do damage out of the backfield as a receiver. So they have a chunk play offense, and to me, that means a lot of yards crossing over 5,000 for Dak Prescott. Definitely going over. 
Okay, we talked about the Super Bowl MVP, Tom Brady. He recently revealed, of course, that he played 2020 on a bum leg, essentially, a torn MCL. Now, Bucks fans are excited to see what he can do on two good legs. The GOAT has a yards prop of 4,600 and a half. He has thrown over 4,600 yards five times in his Hall of Fame career, including last year. The band is back together, Emery. You over or under on Brady? I'm over, and I'm a little, hes I'm a little bit hesitant on it because... This seems like a setup. This is like the leaves on the on the concrete that you see. You know there's a hole there, but you still walk across those leaves anyway. I'm still going to smash it over because you're right. He went over 4,600 yards last year. The band is back together. He's healthy, and the passing offense now should be a little bit more in sync to start the season. So I think this number will definitely go over 46. I'm going to go under here, and it's really more of a result of the things that are around Tom Brady and in the division than anything else. Um, you know, we could see him get involved in some shootouts with the Falcons and, and potentially the Panthers. You know, if it remains to be seen on Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill. If Taysom Hill plays for the Saints, I think you're going to see the lower passing numbers, lower scoring in those two games where Tom Brady plays the Saints. Initially, as I pointed out earlier, I think the Bucks run away with this division, and I wouldn't be surprised if Tom Brady sits in the final week. I know maybe that's not Bruce Arian style. Maybe they want to keep cranking up yardage, but I would expect that if this team is rolling through the regular season, that they tend to lean on the running game a little bit more in the second half to try and wear down opponents. Their defense is very good. I just don't think they're going to be in quite as many shootouts. So I'll take the under here, uh, expecting the Buccaneers to be very good and not need Tom Brady quite as much as they did down the stretch last year. Okay, before we let you guys go, Amanda likes short-term investments. She likes things that pay off quickly. I like long-term investments. So give me a best bet for a season-long player prop when it comes to the quarterbacks. Uh, I'll go first then, and I will say uh, Sorry, I will, go, Will. I will yeah, veer. Go I will veer. My fault. I will veer off of my uh, my usual branding here with the Pick Six Podcast, and I will say that my best bet is Derek Carr over. We're going Derek Carr to the moon. Why his his over under prop is 4,050 yard, 50 and a half yards. That's way too small for a 17 game season. You look at his season, you know, you look at his season long totals and you think, all right, this probably won't happen. But since John Gruden arrived in, in Oakland slash Las Vegas, Derek Carr has averaged 254 and a half passing yards per game. Uh, this is the team with a terrible defense. And if you multiply that by 17, and I expect him to play 17 games because they'll be fighting maybe for a playoff spot. At, at the very least, they won't want to just give up at the end of the season. That gets out to 4,300 yards. I think he clears this by a substantial margin given how bad the Raiders defense is and given you know the addition of some some weapons in that receiving game at plus 6,000 I'm going Jameis Winston MVP this guy will get the benefit the beneficiary of being with a team that has a top eight top five defense in New Orleans their front step is going to be outstanding we know they could turn the ball over on the back end that's added possessions and when you think back to when that Saints offense was outstanding, that's when they were working touchdown to check down coming off play action. We know they can run the football. What was missing from their offense was the play action pass because Breeze on was shot. I think Jameis Winston is going to have a fantastic year uh, throwing the football. Look for him to break a lot of single season records for New Orleans and win the MVP. I'd like that value at plus 6,000. Will, I'm glad you jumped in there because really ending with Emery taking Jameis Winston to win the MVP is quite possibly the best way to end this segment. Great to see you both. Will Brinson, and Emery Hunt joining us talking about quarterback future bets. For more on the NFL all season long and off season long, check out the Pick 6 podcast. Will Brinson and the Super Friends, the latest episode dropped yesterday, covers burning training camp questions for the NFC West. What about Russ Wilson in Seattle? When will we see Trey Lance? Well, give it a listen, then follow the pod for more. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.